little bit more alongside the, the rocks there. Yes, that's the fish. Right, we have a fish. Oh, now, we, now we're into fun. Oh, <laughs> now we have to play it on the hand. This is, I don't, I don't particularly like playing Pollock on the reel because they tend to go so well. Oh, oh, this one has gone to ground in the weed, but it's impossible to hold them. There he is, he's up, he's off again. Oh, he's back in the weed again. Like another small bit. Well, it's certainly fun. A Pollock on my own creation of fly, it can't be bad. He's what, maybe two, two and a half pounds? He's a good fish. Ah, he's not bad. He gave a good account of himself. As you can see, he's scarred. Now, they're not the scars that I made. They're Previous scars, battle scars, there's nothing on that side, or a bit around the tail there. Nice little fish. We'll take the fly out. That was in well. My own fly, very, very simple fly. Yeah. So that's it. No harm, no damage to him. Nice little fish on my own fly. I think we'll put him back and we'll try and get a few more before the, before the session ends. One thing I would recommend you get, anybody with a taste for this sort of fishing, saltwater fly fishing, even a four or five pound pollock will fight tremendously hard. A good fighting butt is essential. Something like that, which you can jam into your stomach or even hold onto your wrist because there's a tremendous amount of strain in one of these fish. Oh, oh my, oh my, oh my, right at the edge. Oh, that was... Oh. <laughs> that was 20 feet of line out, feet of line. Because I'm just on my... Oh. I don't think it's that big, but... Oh, they go well on the fly. Oh, it's not bad at all, look at that. Oh, it's off again. Oh. Oh. Half a dozen of these and I'd be totally knackered. Oh, dear. Come back, come back. Now, ah, oh, he's nicely hooked. That's it. Ah, perfect. Look at that. There's even a lice on him, sea lice. Look at that. What a fish. What a fish on your own, your own fly. That is what it's all about. Fishing as light as possible. A fresh fish. There's a lice there and a lice there. We'll take the lice off for him. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be kind. Where are we? There's the lice. That's one. Where's the other one? There's the other one. There you go. Right, so we've, we've done him some good. His outing into outer space was well worth it. And he's off. Catch and release. Catch and release. Uh, no harm to him at all. Straight down. Wallop. Oh, I'm going to get another one. I don't care about anything else. I'm off. I'm, in, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. A day that started badly through perseverance, trying different methods, different tactics, can end up a magic day. And it ain't over yet. Well, we've had some really good fishing on this mark. We've had problems with the pollock, but we've managed to overcome them. Now for the bass. Bass are in the Premier League of sporting fish. And we're here at Trebeg, at the crack of dawn, to set about catching one. 
When I first came here, bass were plentiful along these shores, but then, by the late 1980s, they'd gone into a real decline. For the past few years, though, a policy of conservation by the Irish government has produced a noticeable increase in the numbers and quality of fish. There's a ban on commercial fishing and a bag limit of two fish per angler per day and a closed season from the 15th of May to the 15th of June. So play by the rules. Better still, return all but the odd one for the table, if you can catch one, that is, and they'll be there to fight another day. This beach has always been one of my favorites. It's only a couple of hundred yards wide, steep, and with rocks either side. A good place with a moderate surf, but in recent years also very productive in calmer conditions using plugs and flies. What we're doing today is working a plug, a surface popper, along a very short stretch of strand, very early in the morning. Not quite dawn, but near enough. Uh, bass work their way up and down this beach, high tide, it's a fairly steepish beach, and the fish normally work their way, ooh, normally work their way from left to right along this strand. There's a little bit of a gully at this stage of the tide, about oh, 20 yards out. So if you can get a bait out 20 yards, you should be okay. Uh, surface popper, because just after dawn, they tend to. I don't know, the, the, the hunting instinct is more, uh, more pronounced this time in the morning and the surface popper puts up an awful lot of commotion on the surface. Very visual form of fishing this. I've always found dawn and dusk good times for bass when the conditions are right. They tend to come closer to shore and are less easy to spook. Bass tend to hang around the rocks in ambush. And if there's anything there, they should dart out and try and hit the lure. You can see the spitting. You expect to see something attack at any minute. They're attacking these things from below. And quite often you see the bass leaping half out of the water with a plug in its mouth, shaking its head. Very, very visual, very exciting. You'd be surprised how close the bass come in right into the shallows, don't be too fast, don't be too eager to take the, the plug out of the water. The surface poppers are not seeming to work, so maybe the fish are a bit deeper, they're feeding on sand eels as they're coming out or going into the sand. So, to do that, I think we'll, we've got a range of plugs here now, a complete range. Maybe something like this. It's still, the light is still very low. Before the sun hits the water, we'll try a plug that is very visual. This is a brand new one, so we don't really want to lose it. It's called a thunder stick. They're not made anymore, unfortunately. They were discontinued a couple of years in the States. Uh, a very shallow diving plug. It'll only dive down to about or a foot below the surface. Very brightly coloured, you might notice. Um, a lot of people will be put off by these colours. These colours are very, very good in low light conditions. Dawn, dusk, uh, or, a, or a dark, drizzly, rainy day. And today now, before the sun hits the water, we have another, maybe another ooh, half an hour, uh, we'll try that and uh, see how that gets on. Again, you're working in exactly the same way as the popper, the same type of area between rocks, round rocks, brilliant is slowly, let the tail do the work and every so often a quick retrieve just to make the bass go for it. Bring it in in a steady retrieve, let the plug do the work. The tail is the tail can be, can be allowed to wiggle. An injured fish will dive down fast, try to dive down fast, and then slowly rise to the surface and do it again. We're trying to imitate that with this type of lure. As you pull it in, it'll dive, stop pulling, and it'll, it'll rise slowly to the surface. So sink and draw. It looks as though the, the fish or the bait fish, the sand eel, is injured in some way. And that's what, the, that's what the bass are looking for, an easy meal. Well, that didn't work, did it? Why is it bass are never in the place you expect them to be? 
Still, if they're not here, that means they must be somewhere else. Time to move on. Time to try the haunted beach. I'm going to give the Black Strand a try. In the 1960s, this was the place for bass. But in recent years, it seems to have fallen out of favor. But on a flood tide, on a crisp morning, there's still fish to be had here. After dark, too. But at night, it's a different story. I have a friend who won't fish here at night. He's convinced it's haunted, and perhaps he's right. For in 1580, Lord Grey of Wilton sacked a promontory fort full of Italian and Spanish defenders below the village of Smerwick, just along the bay from here. He put them all to the sword, all 600, and ditched their bodies in the sea. Many of them washed ashore here and were buried in the dunes, and even now, after a bad storm, their bones wash out onto the beach. But whether it's haunted or not, my trip to Blackstrand was completely jinxed. Fishing the surface popper here produced no results, not even a comforting swirl as an interested bass decided to take a look. So just where had the bass gone? This is real fishing, all right, and it's starting to get serious. I've decided to give this place a try, Ventry. Just in the distance there, you can see those fingers of rock going out, and amongst those rocks, the bass should be feeding. Almost at the end, there's a rock offshore, and it's between this rock and the land that the bass are most concentrated. They are coming into the bay to feed on crabs and sand eels. The last three hours of the flood tide is the best time to be here. I'm fishing a shallow diving plug about six inches below the surface. It's a jointed plug with an action that looks very similar to a sand eel. Right, yes, yes. At last, we have a bass. It's been a long time coming. A bass, not a very big one, but it's taken a lot of sessions to get this one and it's a very, very welcome bass indeed, I can tell you. What I'll do now is to put this back and uh, carry on fishing and hopefully we'll get a little bit bigger than this because this is only a very small one. It's the most sought after and elusive of saltwater sport fish in the whole of Europe. And I finally got one, but it was the only one of the day. He's away. Thanks for fishing with me on the Dingle Peninsula and I hope to be seeing you again very soon.